AMD's first move in the war against input lag was Radeon anti-lag. That was back in 2019, and as I showed in my original video covering that, anti-lag can make a difference. It isn't completely night and day, and it depends on the game too, but it doesn't hurt to turn it on, and in that video I saw a 35% reduction in input latency, which is a massive difference. Now, AMD has stepped up their game with HyperRx. This part in particular is limited to the 7000 series GPUs or newer, so I'm using this ASUS RX 7600 for my testing. AMD claims that with HyperRx you can get 78% more performance and 54% lower latency. Those are some pretty bold claims, so let's dive in and see if that's the case. Now, HyperRx itself isn't really anything new. It's basically a one-click toggle for Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Anti-Lag, and Radeon Boost. The thing that's new here is the ability to enable both RSR and Radeon Boost at the same time. That's the part that is locked to the 7000 series GPUs. The performance benefits for of those underlying technologies are what give you that extra performance uplift that you may or may not see, and those are pretty well documented by people who are much better at collecting data than I am. There are a couple of things that I want to dispel here though, specifically surrounding the input lag figure. Input lag is just the time that it takes for an action you input, like left clicking your mouse to fire your gun, to that gun being fired on screen. The lower the latency, the more responsive the game will feel, and the faster that you can react to what's happening in games. It's often easier to aim too. The thing is, Part of that latency is all about how much FPS you're getting, or more specifically, how long each frame is taking to render. At, say, a stable 165 FPS, you'll see a new frame every 6 milliseconds. At 30 FPS, though? Yeah, that's more like 33 milliseconds. If we take the two figures AMD presented, 78% more FPS and 54% lower latency, and let's suppose that the starting performance was 60 FPS. Well, 78% more FPS would be around 107 FPS. In frame times, that's 16.7 and 9.3 milliseconds. That's already 44% faster latency just from the FPS improvement. If you add on the anti-lag features, it's pretty reasonable to expect 50% lower latency when you've almost doubled your performance. This is a great example of how your performance can make a big difference in your input latency, so for competitive games you definitely want to turn the settings down to both get better outright performance, but also help your latency. So if HyperRx isn't anything new, what's the deal here? Well, the secret sauce here is something that isn't locked to 7000 series GPUs, which is Radeon Anti-Lag Plus. This is an addition to the existing anti-lag feature, which now uses game-specific tweaks in-game to help lower your latency even more. These are all supported, uh, these are all the support titles at launch, although it sounds like plenty more titles will be on their way soon. Of course, I had to put this to the test, so I've picked three games that I've got some experience in and can use my open source latency testing tool, available at srtt.com by the way, to measure. Those being Apex Legends, Overwatch 2 and Fortnite. I'll start with the latter one there. Fortnite has always been pretty bad for input latency. More recent updates seem to have improved that a little bit, with my results coming back around 32.5 milliseconds on average, with quite a few spiking up to more like 45 to 55 milliseconds. That isn't too bad, although I would hope to see a bit more consistency. Turning Hyper uh, HyperRx on though, which enables Anti-Lag and Anti-Lag Plus, the average drops to 20 
milliseconds. That's 37% faster. And to be clear, that isn't uh, from the frame rate running faster. Both are running around 150 FPS. So this is a driver and in-engine tweak that helps cut over 10 milliseconds off of the average input latency. That's fantastic. Moving on to Apex Legends, I'm happy to report that at 1440p and at high ultra settings, a 7600 will still run around 170 FPS, even with HyperRx off. The latency isn't that bad either, with an average of 23 milliseconds of input lag. Admittedly, the considerable swinging we've got here isn't the best, but overall it's a pretty decent result. Now switching HyperRx on, Again, there wasn't much, if any, more performance on tap here, which is a little strange, but the latency average does go down, but only by a touch. It drops to 20 milliseconds, down from 23. That isn't exactly what you call world changing, although lower is better. The trend does show that anti-lag plus on results are generally better, with occasionally higher hiccups, which is pretty promising. As for Overwatch 2, well, that run at 25.2 milliseconds with HyperRx off, and just 24.9 milliseconds with it on. Yeah, that's functionally identical. You might make the argument that the anti-lag on results are more consistent, and I would agree with you there, but that isn't exactly world-changing performance either. Both settings ran at around 230 FPS, so what's going on here? Well, first you need to understand what these anti-lag features are actually doing. Anti-lag in itself can't make the GPU render the frame any faster. That's what Boost and RSR and FSR are there for, so they have to be doing something else. The main aim of these features, both vanilla and spicy anti-lag, is to reduce overhead that's getting in the way of the frame processing your inputs. At a driver level, that's the regular anti-lag mode, that might mean something like the CPU, uh, trying to queue the CPU workloads more efficiently to help reduce latency. In games, that might be something like discarding partially rendered frames when an input is detected so that you speed up that process. Although, to be clear, that's more of an example that I'm making up of something that could help reduce latency, not necessarily exactly what the game's are doing. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea though of what the features are actually doing in the background. The thing is though, that sort of bottlenecking depends a lot on the game and what hardware you have in your system. Me pairing an RX 7600 with a Ryzen 9 7900X means the CPU isn't likely to be holding up this GPU all that often, and so the results I got here aren't all that impressive. With the balance the other way, you know, a, a higher end GPU and a lower end CPU, the, you know, managing the CPU's resources more effectively may let the GPU rip much, uh, as much as it can, which will likely give you a better improvement. Of course, I would recommend leaving at very least anti-lag and anti-lag plus on if you have an AMD GPU anyway, as it doesn't seem to have any major drawbacks, and I mean, it gives you, if it gives you an improvement, that's great, if it doesn't, ah well. As for HyperRx, I had a weird issue where I assume due to RSR and boost running at the same time, I mean, both of those affect the render resolution, so if they're fighting over what resolution to use, that might explain this, uh, where basically the, the visuals would get super low resolution and blurry, uh, it would run at almost slideshow type performance, and then it would just kick back into normal, everything would look fine, it'd be running at full resolution or full refresh rates. Of course, this is AMD's driver, so maybe we need to give them some time to cook. With that said though, I would love to hear your thoughts about Anti-Lag and Anti-Lag Plus and HyperRx. Is that a feature you would use? Would you just use the Anti-Lag features or, you know, do you have an NVIDIA GPU and this isn't relevant to you? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also apologize for my code can't help it. Uh, and if you want to pick up an open source latency testing tool like I've been using here, you can head to osrtt.com. I'll be linked in the description as well. 
Otherwise, you can check out the uh, 7600 that will be linked in the description and a load of other links if you want to support the channel. You can also subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and check out plenty more videos on the end cards because I have a whole lot you might be interested in. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.